The blood count, complete or full blood count is typically included in all the admission workup and further requests for that depends on the clinical condition as well as what you find on your initial test results. So the main uh, parameters included in that are hemoglobin and hematocrit, platelet count, red blood cell count, uh, here a low count indicates a state of marrow erythropoiesis. Reticulocyte count is often used as an indication of whether your erythropoiesis has started in the marrow or not. So it's often raised in terms of hemolysis or blood loss. And when a growing premature baby is reaching a stage where their erythropoiesis has started, this will help us decide on the need for transfusion at a certain cutoff. Suppose the hemoglobin is borderline and the reticulocyte count is coming up, you have a bigger support to wait and watch rather than to transfuse immediately. Mean corpuscular volume is the actual size of the red blood cell and as we know the fetal RBC is of a larger size and the MCV is higher, it's in the low hundreds in the newborn babies and a low mean corpuscular volume is seen in iron deficiency anemia, it's also seen in thalassemia and in newborn situation in immune hemolytic anemia like ABO setting. The mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration is a reflection of the actual amount of hemoglobin in a certain red cell. It tends to be low in iron deficiency and thalassemia and it tends to be high in situations where the red cell size itself is small like in osmotic fragile conditions, here it's spherocytosis and so on. The mean corpuscular hemoglobin itself is taking into account the actual uh, number of red blood cells in relation to the hemoglobin concentration. That tends to be low as well in uh, anemia due to thalassemia or deficiency. Of course, these parameters are not very commonly used in the newborn stages. The peripheral blood film is important to evaluate in any baby with unexplained anemia or a blood dyscrasia that you're concerned about. Even if there is persisting thrombocytopenia or you suspect a leukemoid reaction in trisomy 21 and other conditions, the blood film is very important. Most of the automated counters that uh, labs use might exaggerate the white cell counts because they count the nucleated red blood cells at the same time. So manual verification by the blood film is important to get an exact number. So you might have a high white cell count but when the corrected count comes it tends to drop as the nucleated red cells are eliminated in the count. One useful uh, tip not specifically in the newborn period but later on in infancy is to calculate the Menser index if you have a low MCV and you want to differentiate uh, iron deficiency from thalassemia. So uh, in thalassemia trait, the Menzer index goes below 13, that is mean corpuscular volume divided by the actual number of red blood cells. And if the count is higher, it usually indicates iron deficiency. So uh, in thalassemia, as you know, the marrow production is not uh, proceeding pro properly. And so the RBC count tends to be low as well. Uh, RBC count tends to be high because of ineffective erythropoiesis and this drops your uh, Menser index. Uh, I'm not discussing this in detail but just a quick uh, guide when we see the hemoglobin you would be deciding on the need for transfusion so most of us go conservative with the transfusion cutoff and it would depend on whether the baby is ventilated whether there is oxygen requirement, the age of the baby and as the baby gets older beyond one month you start looking at the reticulocyte count as well. This, this is a reasonably conservative approach by the NNF and uh, most of us would follow something in this range but a caution that you shouldn't allow it to drop too much because the risk of necrotizing enterocolitis post transfusion could be related to the level to which the hemoglobin is low. So don't allow it to drop too low and that could have an impact on the developing brain as well. So it's important to have a conservative approach in terms of reducing sampling losses. Uh, delayed cot clamping should be practiced as well to reduce the number of transfusions and you should avoid unnecessary transfusions without allowing it to drop to too low levels.